my dad is the only rancher in the United States that's ranching on his original right. This Defending Utah presentation brought to you in part by Anderson Accounting, Trust Plumbing, Higher Calling Firearms, Mini Zoo Comes to You, American Appliance, The Editor Lady, Shem Financial Services, and the Law Offices of Garrett T. Smith. This is Defending Utah Radio on K Talk 1640, every Saturday at 1. To learn more about Defending Utah, or to become an activist member, visit DefendingUtah.org. Welcome back to Defending Utah Radio right here on AM 1640, where we're from Defending Utah, where we think right and wrong, not right and left. We have a packed show for you today. We have, um, we have Ammon Bundy, who uh, I don't think needs any, any introduction. And then uh, after that, we'll be joined with the latest on Count My Vote, a battle going on right here in Utah. And so I think what I want to do is just before we get into, uh, I don't think we should get into anything right now. Well, one thing I want to get into is uh, Orrin Hatch just um, announced that he wasn't going to run for re-election. And uh, right after that, our, on, our, on the Defending Utah Facebook page, we posted our radio show about exposing Mitt Romney and who he really is. And it was interesting who came to his defense. So go to the Facebook, uh, our Defending Utah Facebook page, and look. It was, it was literally communists coming to Mitt Romney's defense. Look at all of their, uh, their avatars. They all had hammer and sickle or the white and black flag. It was communists coming to the defense of Mitt Romney. Hilarious. So you can check that out on the Defending Utah Facebook page. But without any further ado, I want to welcome... Uh, Ammon Bundy to the Defending Radio, Defending Utah Radio program. Thanks for uh, being on with us, Ammon. Yes, thanks for having me. I am. I just. I'm really excited myself to be able to be able to speak to you one on one. We spoke the other day, and I'm really excited to to hear what you had to talk about. One thing I forgot to ask you in advance, though, was um, I don't want to take any time away from what you wanted to talk about. But if somebody has a question, if we have somebody calling in, is that okay? Or do you want to kind of, or is our time really limited and we need to just get right to it and not uh, get bogged down with callers? What would you rather? No, I think callers would be great. I really don't have an agenda. I just want to talk, um, kind of get a feel for what you guys are doing. And uh, if we, um, you know, obviously I want to uh, make a few points, but I would love to have callers. Awesome. So anybody listening, please call in to uh, K Talk 801-254-1640. That's 801-254-1640, like AM 1640. And uh, ask your question of Ammon Bundy. We're also streaming live on Facebook and at ktalkmedia.com, so you can listen anywhere in uh, the world. Um, so Ammon, just kind of uh, everybody, it was I really liked what you said the other day when we were speaking about not. Uh, you're you're done entertaining. They uh, stood up for the the Hammonds in Oregon, and uh, their court case. They're going to be having a hearing on Monday. We've been talking. said, "Look, we are going to take all the unappropriated land," and so that's what they've done. How have they done it? They have literally just put their stamp on it. They put their signs on it. They put their boundaries on it. They've made maps saying it's theirs, and they have claimed it right on top of the other claims, such as my family's. And many, many others, you know, miners, loggers, ranchers, even private property owners, they have put their claim right on top of it. And they said, well, it's not yours, it's ours. Mm -hmm. And then they begin to actually use it. And we see in the ranching case, what they've done is they actually have leased this land back to the original owners. And they've done it through contractual law, and they make money off of it. And so it's, it becomes a beneficial uh, use uh, claim for the federal government. And so they are using it. And then we saw at the ranch, at the Bundy Ranch, what they'll, they're willing to do if you, uh, if you say that it is not theirs, and they are willing to defend it. Mm-hmm. And those are the exact same things that we have to do and that people have to do to maintain rights. So, I mean, I could go into uh, quite a bit more there, and I don't know if I've explained it the best, 
and but it's not just land right. either. It's it's every aspect of our lives that you know nobody has a, a right to, um, legitimately. But uh, if they're going to try and claim it, like you said, and then use it and defend it, and we don't, then we've kind of given up our our rights in those in those ways. And so, it's it's not just land. I don't think. No, it's not just land at all. It's everything. It's everything that that it's all rights. And let me give you give you an example. I I have a, a fleet maintenance company that uh, I started 20 years ago, and I also before all of this happened, I. I built a software to manage shops. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my might sound odd, but the ranch wasn't big enough for all of us to make a living off of it, and I had to go find another way to make a living. So <laughs> that's, that's what I began to do. Well, so that software is my right, right? I And it's worth something now. Mm -hmm. Now, but how did I – I didn't buy that software from somebody. I didn't – you know, I didn't. Uh, so how does that become my right? And you that's because I developed it. I, I was the first one there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was the first one who had those ideas. And the idea alone wasn't enough. So then I had to um, make it so that those ideas can be used and to be to, 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 to be developed and to be used. And and then once I had that, I claimed them. That these are mine. I had I had these ideas first. I'm now using them. These ideas and they're mine. And I I got a copyright on them, and it's my right. And now those rights are worth something. I could sell them. Mm -hmm. I could trade them. But yet no one no one gave them to me. No one, um, you know, no one transferred them to me. I actually developed those rights. And that's the same thing. The way the land out here was developed. The way all rights are developed. Thereby, first time, first in right, first, uh, first in time, first in right is what is called and beneficial use. That's right. how rights are established. And then once a right is established, then you could claim it. And the only way you can hang on to it is to use it. And then when someone comes to take it, you have to be willing to defend it. When we, I was talking to you, we talked about the um, how with you being in, in, in prison. I think you've really given a good. Um, uh, example or a, a good a visual of what you know you're going to the dance right but and while you're I'll have you tell that story but um, it's been it seems like people have have forgotten what it was that you and your family were doing and so we need to be able to bring us back to that and so we're not just so distracted on uh, the important thing of getting you back to prison I mean getting you out of prison and and free again you and your family free again but what was it that uh, that you guys were doing in the first place? So kind of give that uh, analogy, and then we can get into what it is that we need to get back to. Well, you know, the, the analogy is just that we're going to the party to go, you know, to go dancing. My family likes to dance. And on the way there, we uh, fell in the mud. And so we don't get up and get out of the mud and get cleaned off and go home. We get up, get out of the mud, and then we go back to dancing. Right. Or we go to the dance and dance. And that's what we plan to do. And, and, you know, as far as what my family was doing, well, I don't want to give the wrong impression that my family was doing anything other than literally just defending our rights. Um, but it's become more than that. Um, for example, when we found out about the Hammond uh, and – We've seen it many, many times with our neighbors, neighboring ranches. That at one time there was 53 ranchers in in the Clark County area. That uh, you know, all our neighbors, and now my dad is the only one left, and that's directly caused because of these uh, abusive regulatory uh, restrictions that they placed on these ranchers, mm -hmm. and and these ranchers were trying to negotiate with with the federal government on their rights and they lost them all because they allowed again not to you know go into too much but they allowed again for the federal government to claim those rights and say that they were theirs that meaning the federal government right. and then then they lost them and so now my dad's the only one left in clark county wow. that's ranching on his original rights in fact 
my dad is the only rancher in the United States that's ranching on his original right. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, there was one other rancher. Um, uh, well, there was there was. So let me just back up. When my dad decided to nullify his contracts with the Bureau of Land Management, with the federal government, and to begin ranching on his original right, mm-hmm. another rancher next to him, by the name of Keith Nate, same thing, and they stood together. But Keith Nate passed away, and mm-hmm. all the other ranchers were like, "Oh, there's no." Stand against the federal government, you know they're too big. They'll destroy our ranches. They'll destroy our, you know, livelihoods. We've got to compromise. Well, my dad and Keith May were the only two ranchers that withstood the, all these regulatory blows that the federal government was giving them because they weren't complying. Right. Keith May passed away, and that left my dad as the only rancher. And then, after the, you know, the Bundy Ranch incident. Uh, where the federal government, all of that happened in 2014, another rancher nullified his contract uh, and began to ranch on his original rights, making it where there was only two ranchers ranching on their original rights. And that other rancher uh, is a a man by the name of Lavoie Finicum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think most know what happened to him, Um, Again, uh, on our way to a, a meeting to teach these principles that uh, we were teaching, uh, he, we were ambushed, and he was killed. Right. And I don't think it's a coincidence that they took his life, and then they threw my father into prison. And uh, because like two years what... later, like it, it was bizarre. I, I thought how long they waited to, to go after your dad. Well, they thought they had a good excuse, you know, which was us going into into the refuge there. Right. They thought they had a good excuse, and it's proven otherwise. Exactly. Um, it's actually only it's, – it's been extremely painful, and we've gone through a tremendous amount of suffering. But it has been the way that the Lord has wanted it because it has exposed them and continues to do so. I think that's a really key point is sometimes, you know, we're afraid to take action, but, you know, sometimes the pain and suffering leads to a a greater thing in the long run. And we can see that. And we're, we're almost, we're about out of time for what we have for today, which I I hate. This is one of those topics that I could just talk to you for a long, long time. And that needs a long discussion to flesh out all the things because our culture has been changed so much to not understand what it is to defend our rights. We're, we're brainwashed into thinking that whatever the government does is right, and if we don't like it, then we need to just beg our masters for our freedom back. That's not what the Founding Fathers did. That's not what the principles of liberty. That's not what our nation is founded upon. And uh, yep. so before I have to let you go, there's a couple of questions people have, have uh, typed in on Facebook. Um, Ra- Raul asks, uh, will they bring up a lawsuit? Will you, they, meaning you, Ammon, and your family or anybody that you know of, Bring a lawsuit against the federal government, and uh, can you press charges against uh, your accusers? So there is no mechanism to press charges against our accusers. They have they have uh, corrupted the system enough uh, and have control of the grand jury where you cannot indict them. You can't even uh, bring up charges against them, um, which is is revealing in itself. Right. Uh, we can uh, do a lawsuit, and let's say we win because there's there's. Well, let's just say we bring up a lawsuit against the federal government, yeah, in a federal court with a federal judge with federal attorneys, you know. So the the chances of winning are in a in in that circumstance where you're suing the federal government in a federal court, right? Is very it's very limited and very difficult. But we have tremendous amount of evidence that would probably make it so we have a good chance of winning. But then, who pays the bills? Right. The American people do, the taxpayers. Not the person that made the decisions, right. not the, the corrupt prosecutors. So, you know, I, to be honest with you, can't see how uh, liberty is going to be furthered uh, uh, through, through suing the federal government and making the People pay for their mistakes. Well, and that's what that's what Lavoy actually said when on, on his show the week before he was killed. Was that's why these other organizations, the federal government, loves them. They pretend to stand up for our rights, 
but the federal government loves them because they keep it in the courts. Yeah, they, you know, uh, again, rights are not maintained in the courts. Rights are maintained by claiming them, using them, and defending them. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter if it's your car, your backpack, or your home, or a ranch. And they are not maintained in the courts. They're maintained on the principles of claim, use, and defend. I think that's the perfect uh, place to, to leave it at. I, I hope we can talk to you again real soon, Ammon, and uh, I appreciate you being on with us. Thank you for having me. Ammon Bundy, uh, you should uh, make sure and keep, f- keep uh, track of that situation. The Bundy Ranch is on Facebook, and you can follow that and make sure you, you know what's going on with that situation. This Defending Utah presentation was brought to you in part by Anderson Accounting, when you care enough to pay the very least. AndersonAccounting.com Trust Plumbing, 801-808-5470 Higher Calling Firearms, HigherCallingFirearms.com Mini Zoo comes to you, 801-414-5279 American Appliance, at AmericanAppliancehVAC.com and the editor lady, the editor lady at gmail.com. Shem Financial Services, 801 856 6151, and the law office of Garrett T. Smith, 801 477 1570. Make sure and subscribe to Defending Utah Radio on iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and YouTube.